let's look at the schedule. So the encoder project is due next uh, Thursday. All right, so you get a chance to work on that today and also next Tuesday. And uh, I won't be here on Tuesday because uh, of the conference trip. I'll come back on Wednesday night. So Thursday I will be here uh, for another introduction to a different project, which is the balancing robot. So the, the, the balancing robot has a motor. It's a DC motor, it's not a separate motor. The DC motor has an encoder attached to the bottom of it that is able to, uh, you know, it's not like a DC motor, you run it, there's no feedback. I think that one will be able to measure the speed. The encoder is able to measure something to give you a feedback. It's more accurate. But I think it's still not as good as a separate motor. So after we get into that one, we assemble that uh, balance robot we bought. And it's not a task for this semester, but in the future, I hope we can translate that code to our separate motor's code, which is you know, the one that I've been using is from a person in, in uh, Holland. You know, it's not being certified in the code. So the, when, when I built the robot, it worked. For the students, it's not really repeatable. And I don't know why. So it's better to use the commercial product code um, for that separate encoder in the future. So it's better to understand what's the, what's the, what is going on for the encoder. It's, it's a pretty important component, and we have never used it for our my control class. So I think it's a good chance to to introduce it here. Um, And we also use a different stepper motor. It's, it's from the Arduino Alago kit. This is the last torque compared to the ones we have used for the joystick. And it's smaller and has a dedicated driver as well. So that's the circuit to, to drive it. You just need a, that little uh, regulator. Uh, and the, that's a driver board. You don't, want to, you, you don't have to build it. It's directly came with the kit. And with our Arduino board, you can use a nano if you like. <clears throat> and here explains the theory behind the stepper motor. And I don't think you have to you have to watch it. Probably not. As long as you can finish all the tasks. Let's see what are the tasks. Yeah, I do have tasks. So repeat section one, two. I think uh, section one is okay. So the tasks are in the video. We can see whatever I did over there, just repeat it. Okay. Here's a little script. So this one doesn't have the encoder integrated to it, just stepper motor. Very simple, very simple. Right. So that's task one. So task two got involved, uh, the encoders uh, involved. And this is where I bought it. And so it's here the theory behind the encoder. And there are all different kinds of encoders. So, so the encoder we are using here, it's a, I think it's, a, it's an optical encoder. So it couldn't see any optical signal because it's already encapsulated into the package. So if you look at A and B, you know how to understand this one. So the, the person uh, who developed the, all these uh, tutorials, he drew this picture. I think it's a pretty good one. So for example, the, the dot here, uh, is a receiver is a receiver but you couldn't see a transmitter so it's like the the robot robot car we we developed has a, a transmitter and receiver so if you block the light you are not the receiver is not getting any light if you don't block it we keep constantly receiving something so very similar so for example the a and b's are the two receivers uh, but it's not showing a transmitter for example if the receiver are getting blocked by this block here okay it's going to change the signal it can be changed from low to high or high to low. Doesn't matter. So it's changing. Okay. So here is how you can, um, you know, you use a program to find out if this encoder is being rotated uh, in a in a counterclockwise or clockwise. And how many, how many um, moves uh, have been made to the encoder? So it has a certain number of uh, moves for each revolution. 
Oh, I forgot how many. But I can definitely feel that it's not a continuous movement. Um, so every time you move it, it's going to generate the pulse for both A and B. So there are two pins. One is A, one is B, for example, and the others are like just powering ground. Okay, so the, you can definitely uh, sense or connect these two pins to Arduino and use the digital input, right? digital read and the input to read these two, uh, two pins. So you'll, you'll see very similar pulses like this with the pattern on the right-hand side. Right? So they are not going to generate the pulse at the same time because they located in a different place. That's why it's, there will be a, a phase shift between these two signals. Okay? So we are not worrying about this high to low, low to high, it doesn't matter. Okay? For example, if, if, the, if the plate is rotating clockwise, okay, so if I just, when I'm writing the code, okay, I have an if statement. So if the state of A has been changed, if the state of A has been changed, you know, what's going to happen? And wait, rotating. Very simple C code you can write. So, um, so we're here. Okay. So at the very beginning of the loop, you just assign the previous state to the current state, which is I just call it a state. Every time you just update it. And then if A is different, right? If A is different, and then I want to check B very quick. Right? If B is different from A, then I count it. I plus one to the counter, which is like moving to the clock, uh, moving to one direction, I plus one. Otherwise, I minus one. So it's not moving to that direction, it's moving back. Right? And eventually you assign the current A to as the last A, so next loop, it becomes the last A. Right? You get a new A later, but you know, Older one becomes the last thing. <laughs> Any questions by far? And the second task is to ask you so you can see that it's moving position can be positive or negative, depends on the direction of the movement, the link order. And you can use this one to control the motor. And once you can sense which direction it's moving to and how many. Uh, moves you have made to the encoder, and uh, so the Arduino just sends it and directly send it to the motor. So you can use an encoder to control motor movement. So a lot of robot arms is being uh, operated in that way. So you you build an arm, um, and you know it's sometimes it's difficult to imagine like what are these positions or sequences on the programs of the arm. They have the encoders being installed to the joints. And then you just move the robot arm like to here, to here, and do this. Just have all the sequences being sensed by the encoder and being sent to my controller. And my controller will store all the all the movements for the list for the list. Uh, and eventually, it's going to it's going to duplicate it later, right? So I want this robot arm to do all these kind of movements in a certain sequence. But I just make a fake one that doesn't have anything there, but just the joints with the encoders. I move it that way in that sequence. It's going to code that my controller the, the, all the list in there, and then I program it, uh, and then I send it to the real robot arm has motors inside of encoders. 
they might drive the robot arm in a certain sequence. This was being used in, in, in a lot of uh, applications. It's good to know how, how this works. This experiment setup is going to show you that you can synchronize the movement between the encoder and the stable motor. And the stable motor is the one that came with the uh, original kit result. that you have. You can see right. that if I rotate the encoder clockwise, right. so the uh, stable motor is going to rotate simple, clockwise as well. It's reasonable to it may rotate the encoder counterclockwise. Just make it a one week does. project. So, Today That's and uh, next Tuesday. However, and it still has the code uh, is definitely not perfect. It's still Thursday, right? As you can see that. Next week. See. Yep. Okay, so after, so starting from next Thursday, we're going to start the, the balancing robot project, which lasts for almost four weeks. And instead of just uh, uh, letting you start working on it yourself, uh, compared to last. Compared to last time, I, I taught it. So we're going to have weekly presentations to show the program. It's going to be difficult, like, you just push to the very end and didn't do anything at the beginning. But our last week, we to complete something. It's difficult. Let's have um, intermediate presentations during the weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just sit here right, and talk about it. So the goal is, yeah, so. First, you need to get a credit from this, right? And I need to uh, grade it. But and the goal is I just want to build some balancing robots and make it work with the joystick. Yeah. Instead of just teaching, I just hopefully everyone can, can build one. And I'll, I'll be willing to give it to you later on if you, if you build it. Um, so the one we bought, show it real quick. These are the DC motors. Um, it has a battery cell over here, and uh, we don't have to use their driver in the future. And we have a lot of these sensors. Um, it's Arduino Nano board, just one mic controller with a accelerometer with a gyroscope. I think very similar to our six. What's the name of that one? Six thousand. I forgot the name of it. Like MP six DC. Six DC. Yeah. Very similar. So you can see it's super doable. And I was looking at their, their code, it's totally open source. And there are like 20 or something higher files in there. And I think they, they made it that way is because even including the I2C, they have a, a higher file inside of the installed, installing that uh, library into our bin. I think they just wanted someone, maybe a high schooler, a middle schooler, they bought it, they don't expect them to install these libraries for Arduino ID. So they just hope them like click and program. That's why they have so many header files in there and the program the structure everything in a totally different way. Um, and it, is, it has several different modes. It is able to avoid obstacles. It is able to uh, do what? Uh, following an object. It's very interesting, but not really repeatable and reliable. I, I tried it. It's not really, really well. But it's able to balance itself pretty well, which is great. And I uh, was trying to uh, simplify the code. First, remove all the modes. So don't do any modes anymore. It's just balancing itself. So for example, I just turn it on and just balance, right? Very simple. So we can verify, we can just find out what are these necessary, oops, the balancing itself. What are these necessary, uh, pieces of code are being used to just balance the car. Okay. So the reason I want to do that is I, I, I looked into the code. It's very similar to the ones we used for the uh, last few years. But there are some some something new I've been added to the code. This might be the, the, the critical parts which really helps it balance itself and make it repeatable for different cars instead of the you know the one we used. It works on my car, but somebody else built it. It's just not gonna work anymore, and I just don't know why. So it's better to you know, use their code, but I have to simplify it to just one page code, a PID controller with the. I think they have, they have two PIDs, one for speed, one for, one for the angle, uh, whatever. Um, find out all the necessary, but not any redundant code, right? Not the modes, but just the balancing. 
and starting from there. So I'm trying to simplify everything, it's very close to the final final version of it. So I find out that piece of code and I'll give it to you guys and you will you know try it, balance it, that's the first task, and then start integrating the wireless controller, uh, the 2.4 gigahertz module and with the joystick, which you did for the federal motor. Uh, we'll just drive it. That's that's our only the only uh, goal here. Balance it and use the joystick to move it around. Sounds very simple, right? Since how many years? <laughs> and this is a new product. First time I taught robotic school, we there's no nothing like this on the market. Even this is very simple. I imagine. Probably because uh, Arduino just makes uh, the coding of the algorithms super, super simple. You can directly use libraries instead of writing the library by themselves, then directly to the PID really easily. So my control is not a new thing. It's been here like probably for the peak, you know, peak the controllers from microchip. It's been on the market for over 20 years. Not too many people are using that to do this kind of thing. It's super simple. It's like Four years ago. <laughs> Why is it in Dula for 20 years? Interesting, right? Um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much the goal for this semester. And you can see that we should get everything finished before the full break. So we got two weeks to work on the uh, real time system, I think, which is another. Super important topic. I'm I'm adding to this semester. We're not able to do it. We didn't have time from the couple of uh, two years ago. But we'll. I'm gonna ask probably two tutorials over there. So just um, practice on that. It's just totally different way to program my controller. So right now I have one loop, right? And for you know people really managing so many interrupts. You have to do tasks. So it's going to be a totally different API. You use all the task um, uh, functions to uh, program different things inside, inside of just one loop and different interrupts. Uh, I will see. It's going to be really fun later. Any other questions? Guarding anything? 